Blender 4.3 introduces some exciting render enhancements. One notable addition is the new white balance function in the color management system. While this may not sound thrilling at first, it significantly improves Blender's ability to simulate traditional photography where the need to change the look of the scene depends on where the photograph is taken. For instance, exterior photography on a bright sunny day will have a different white balance need than photography done in an interior near the end of the day. White balance refers to how white is defined in a rendering. You might think that white is simply RGB 255 in each of the three channels, but in a rendering system that uses color profiles, the definition of white can vary depending on how white light is defined relative to the color profile. This affects the overall tonality in a rendering, which is crucial for scenes with light sources that have a strong color bias, either warm or cool. For example, in interior architecture, many light sources are defined with low Kelvin ratings to give them warm tones. White balance allows you to use these lights without changing their color, balancing the scene's overall color towards a more neutral tonality. White balance also gives you subtle artistic control over the look of a scene. So what's happening technically? First, we need to examine the 1931 CIE chromaticity diagram. This diagram was developed to capture the full range of colors that the human visual system can perceive, facilitating color consistency across various technologies. This is how color spaces and profiles are defined. Blender uses the sRGB color space. The chart is organized by arranging primary color values from lower nanometer wavelengths to higher wavelengths. These correspond to purples and blues, then to greens, yellows, and finally reds, which have the highest visible nanometer wavelengths. The chart has an XY coordinate system that allows for the identification of specific colors that are mixtures of other color wavelengths. In the middle of the chart, we have a mixing of wavelengths that produce RGB values with high and nearly equal proportions of red, green, and blue. We perceive these as white. However, because we're also dealing with intensity, many of the colors in this interior space can be seen as white with sufficient brightness. Therefore, the color space needs to be defined where its visible neutral white point is, and its definition of what white is that affects the rendering's overall tonal quality. A series of white point standards, called illuminants, seek to define this white under various lighting conditions. One of the very common illuminant series, called the D-series illuminants, define the color temperature of outdoor light during various times of the day. Of the illuminant D-series, D65 is the most commonly used standard. It would produce a neutral to slightly cool white tone on a piece of paper on a clear, sunny day where both the yellow of the sun and the blue of the sky mix. D65 is also widely used for display and monitor calibrations, and was, until version 4.3, Blender's internal default white point. The color coordinates of each illuminate white point are based on the 1931 CIE color diagram, precisely defined by X and Y coordinates. However, the daytime lighting conditions needed to produce this white aren't always optimal with other lighting conditions, such as in interior architectural renderings. These scenes may use artificial lights, which can be heavily biased towards cooler or warmer tones due to the nature of the lighting technology used. Therefore, a white point tuned to produce a balanced or neutral lighting for these situations may be needed. The D65 white point actually lies on a curved line that connects to neighboring white point possibilities. This line is called the black body locus. It represents the color of light emitted by a perfect black body at different temperatures, ranging from warm to more cool light. The black body values are measured in Kelvin units. D65 is close to 6500 Kelvins. Other white point standards include D50 and D75, each with their corresponding Kelvin values. This curved black body line, called the primary axis, shifts along a blue to red axis. As the white point moves along this curve, you transition from cooler, bluish tonality to warmer, more reddish tonality. What's important to understand is that as the white point shifts, all the tonalities of the image are affected. 
This is the crux of white balance. If you define the white point so that warm casting lights become more white, it will make cooler parts of the image appear stronger. Conversely, if you make cooler lighting in the scene more neutral, it will emphasize the warmer tonalities. There are two variables for manually adjusting the white point, Kelvin and tint. The Kelvin value relates to the black body temperature mentioned earlier and can be used to shift the white point along the primary cool warm axis of the CIE color chart. The black body node in the shader editor uses these same values to color lights, for instance. However, the predefined illuminant values, such as D50, D75, or D93, don't necessarily align exactly on the black body line. For instance, even though the illuminant D65 white point standard uses a value near 6500 Kelvin, it's not exactly on this primary axis. These predefined white point standards also take into account a secondary axis that shifts the tonality of the white point a little bit along the green or magenta direction. This secondary axis is perpendicular to the primary blue-red black body axis. So, the second value in Blender's white balance setting is tint. This shifts the white point along this secondary green magenta axis, imparting a secondary hue shift towards or away from these green and magenta tones. Up until Blender 4.3, Illuminant D65 was hard-coded as the white balance. There is a curves panel in the color management area, but its adjustments are ad hoc and based solely on the artist making visual changes they like to the image. White balance in Blender 4.3 is designed to use a systematic approach to white balance that's been scientifically designed for various lighting conditions and systems. But the great thing is that it also provides us, the users, with a new artistic tool. Combined with different view transforms, such as AGX or Kronos, we have a new function to adjust our final renderings in some wonderfully creative ways. So we spent a lot of time looking at theory, and let's jump in now and take a look at a real-world example here in Blender 4.3. So we're going to come over, over here into the Render Properties, and we're going to come down to the bottom where we have Color Management, and you'll note that we have a new White Balance entry. Before we do anything with that, we're going to take a look at the two lights that we have in the scene. So I've got two area lights, one that is labeled 4000K, and the other that is labeled 8000K. So if you've guessed, that's obviously the black body temperature that I have assigned for the color of each light. So we can clearly see with the coloration of these two lights that we have warm on the left and a cooler on the right because of these black body temperatures. If we come down, we can see that there is a new entry for white balance. It's not turned on, but it is showing the default. If you remember, Blender uses the Illuminant D65 as its internal white balance default. So when you open old files, it's compatible. Nothing changes until we turn on the white balance. So this temperature of 6502 and the tint of 9.8 are the values for the Illuminant D65. So we have sort of this mid-grade white balance between these two colors. So let's come over and change the white balance by shifting to one of the different illuminants. So let's start with the luminant D50. Remember, D50 is going to have a Kelvin range around 5,000. You want to think about this from the standpoint of 5,000 being the value that you essentially want to neutralize, that you want to become more neutral. Since 5,000 is on the warmer side, we're essentially going to neutralize the warmer values. So when we click Illuminant D50, that's exactly what we get. We get the warmer tones neutralized, and the bluer values on the opposite side become more prominent. So let's do the opposite, but let's sort of reset our visual palette by going back to the default of Illuminant D65. We'll come back and we'll go to Illuminant 93. 9300 is on the much, much bluer side, the cooler side of that black body axis. So that is what it's going to neutralize, is those cooler terms. And it emphasizes then the opposite values, which are the warmer tones. So let's really drive this point home. Let's come over and reset back to our basic Illuminant D65, which is the default neutral. And we want to take each of these lights and really emphasize them. So I'm going to take 
The cooler, up to 9,000, coolers tend to be a little bit less prominent. The warmer side tends to be more dominant in terms of the color. So we'll come over here to the 4,000 and let's take this down to 3,000, which will really warm that up. So we've got a lot of contrast between these two. Let's move away from using a preset. We're going to manually adjust temperature and tint. So let's, let's remove an influence from tint. So we're not having any shift along that magenta green axis. And we're going to take temperature and match exactly the 3000 that we have for the emitting warm light. And remember that will neutralize that to become white. And then that's what we get. So right up here, we get that white. But remember, it shifts the other side to become more prominent, which is exactly what we see. Now let's also do a quick examination of this tint value using the manual 6500K as our neutral white point, which is what we have set here. So let's come down to tint and let's give it a positive value of 20 and see what that effect has. So you can see it gave it just a little bit more of a magenta hue to it. Now let's take it back down to zero so we can clear our visual palette. And then let's give it minus 20, which will shift it a little bit to the green. So that's exactly what this tint function does. It's this balance between magenta and green. So this is pretty basic, but let's take a look at some more sophisticated examples in more real world scenes. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. In this first one, it's a rendering of this kitchen scene and it's using D65. There are a lot of these warm lights, so obviously the tonality of the scene has warmth, but there's also an exterior HDRI that it's an outdoor light, and so there's a little bit of the blueness coming from that outdoor light. If we go to D50, this is what we get. So we've sort of neutralized the warmer tones and given more cool appearance to the overall rendering. But we could go in the other direction too. Let's come back here to D65, the neutral, and then go in the opposite direction where we have D93 and it really warms up and we lose some of the bluer tones. So this is the kind of thing that you can use with white balance from an artistic standpoint. So let's take a look at this same scene. We're back with D65. So what happens if we take this up to manually set it to 6500 Kelvin, but a tint of minus 35, which is gonna go in the green direction, we get this. Well, let's do something else. Let's manually take it to 5,000 Kelvin, but with a tint of 15, which moves us in the direction of magenta, and we get that. And then finally, let's keep it at 5,000 Kelvin, but go back to a negative 35 on tint, and we end up with that. So this is what's really kind of cool about this white balance function is you can really change the artistry of your image by playing with these values. Let's take a look at another example. Here's another good example. Here's a rendering with D65, the default. But what if I want to neutralize just a little bit of the blue in the scene? So we would go to D75 and we get this. So we've warmed it up just a little bit. But when I look at this, I think, you know, maybe there's just a very, very subtle hint towards the green direction that I'd like to neutralize. So I'm going to manually add the tint to 22. D75 has a native tint of almost 10. So by taking it to 22, we move it in the magenta range and we get this. So there was just that subtle hint towards the magenta, which I kind of like. But Let's go back to D65, our default. What if we want to go in the opposite direction? Maybe we'd like to make this a little bit cooler. So I'm going to take it to D55 and we get this. And I actually kind of like this. To me, there's something really interesting about the cooler tones on this black wall. So let's look at one final example. We have this rendering. And in this particular case, we're going to start off with D55 which is going to make it just a little bit cooler. Then let's take a look at D65, the default, and we get that. It's a little bit warmer. I kind of like that. But let's examine what D75 is, which will make it even a little bit warmer. I like that too. But I think maybe I'm going to go back to this mid D65. But what if I want to adjust the tint to see what would happen if I take the tint in either direction? 
the default tint of D65 is at a value of 10, so if I take it to a value of negative 10, then we get this. Oh, well that really changed the characteristic. Let's test what happens if we go in the other direction and give it a tint of 20 towards magenta, we get this. So this will give you a real sense about what you can do with changing the characteristics of your renderings just by playing with the white balance.